This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami. It's the morning here, 11 a.m. Uh, we're doing a hangout book review with uh, Jose Guerrero, uh, the author of a book, Introduction, Introduction to the Applications of Mind Mapping in Medicine. And we're joined by a distinguished group of panelists. First, we're going to introduce them, and they're going to say a little bit about themselves. And we'll start with you, Simon. Hello everyone, my name is Simon Downs. I'm uh, coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. I'm a developmental psychologist and a medical student. Uh, it's nice to meet you all. I'm looking forward to learning more about mind mapping. Thank you. Welcome, Simon. He's a frequent flyer. And Ricardo, Ricardo Correa, MD, endocrinologist at a conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Can you unmute yourself, Ricardo? Yes, how are you? My name is uh, Ricardo. I am uh, Okay, uh, we'll have to work on your sound, Ricardo. Okay, Manuel, welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Manuel Menendez from Oviedo, Spain. I'm a neurologist. And I also collaborate with the International Medical Society and International Medical Society. So nice to meet you. Okay, Manuel, welcome. Okay, uh, we'll turn it over to Jose, and Jose is going to talk about his book. Bienvenidos, Jose. Gracias. <laughs> Hello. So, should I start speaking? Sure, sure. You, you can start your presentation. Well, I'm. I got. Uh, I have a strange background, and so I have a degree in chemical engineering. Then I became a lecturer in biostatistics at the Faculty of Medicine of Barcelona, well, one of the two faculties here. And then I moved to another strange field that is insurance, in software development especially. And before that, I did uh, a lot of work in medical diagnosis by computer, but uh, I don't know what happened. We couldn't stay in that area for a very long time. It was complicated. Then after many years of developing software for insurance companies um, and other areas, I, I did something for uh, healthcare. I decided I designed uh, the, the the IT system for a, a hospital for the admissions department, so I returned to medicine again. And then a few years later, I discovered mind mapping, and I started uh, thinking about the possibilities of this technique. And then after the first uh, software to, to create mind maps appeared in the market in around 1992 or so. I bought uh, one of the first copies of this software and started working on the idea of uh, automating the creation of mind maps, not just creating mind maps by typing information and creating manually with uh, software, but the idea of extracting information from databases or text files and create uh, complicated uh, mind maps, or at least com complex mind maps, rather. And then, uh, after a few years of trying and being not very successful, uh, in the end, I, I managed to create uh, the first uh, mind mapping automation application in around 2008 or so. It was for an insurance case, but that I will show an example later. And then after that I decided that uh, medicine was a very interesting field to try to find applications of this type. And then uh, in this, the recent three or four years I've been trying to develop applications for healthcare. And this book, uh, Introduction to the Applications of Mind Mapping in Medicine, is a recopilation of 
everything I've learned about mind mapping in those years and the applications I have managed to develop. And then, well, after this in introduction, I'm going to, to share part of my, my knowledge with you. So I have prepared this presentation, small presentation. Well, the, the basic idea why of why mind mapping is a very interesting technique is that we have lots of problems with information. Basically because most of the information that uh, arrives to us is in the form of, of linear text, something like this, for example. As you can see, well, all the information is there, but we find the problems the typical problems when we try to, to learn something new or read something or find uh, about uh, the content of uh, any linear text is the problem is that there is a lot of information but uh, we have to concentrate very much to try to find uh, what we are looking for. So the typical. Oh, are you, are you, excuse me, Jose. Are you showing slides because they're not they're not? Oh yeah, sorry. No, we can't see oh, them. Gosh. We can't see them. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I will go back. Well. Okay, there we go. This. Screen. Well, this is. Uh, I was talking about. Uh, the main problem we have with information is that most of it is. Uh, sent to us as linear text, something like this, for example. Nothing uh, surprising, just the typical information. But uh, the, the problem is we have to concentrate very much to try to find what's in all this set of lines of text. And this is complicated. And why? Well, I have tried to summarize uh, most of the problems with linear text. The first problem is that it is difficult to understand and analyze because it's, uh, it's sort of very boring. So we have, just by looking at it, uh, we have to, we need a lot of concentration. Then another, uh, the second big problem is that it does not offer a sense of perspective or structure. Just by looking at this text, we don't see the structure, so we have to work very hard to try to create, uh, to, to see the, the structure be behind this linear text. And this is always, we always find this, the same problem. Another big problem, the third one, is the linear text does, does not show the relationship between the parts of the text. So we, here we don't see what's the relation between this first paragraph and the, the last paragraph, for, for example, or between the third paragraph and the fifth. So there's something, a list of lines, a series of lines of text, but nothing gives us a clue about uh, the relationship between the, these parts. And finally, Another big problem is that it does not allow us to see the, the whole picture. So what's the content of this information? We don't see something that says, well, the, the basic idea of this all this test is this. We just see a list of lines, but no, we don't get a whole picture. So another, well, this is, until recently, we, we just had the, the problem with linear text. But then, with the advent of the uh, World Wide Web, we thought we were going to to escape from that, from our problems. But in fact, the problems are almost the same because, in fact, web pages are just list of, of several blocks of linear text, but uh, with the the complication that now we have uh, hyperlinks, so we click on a tab, 
and we go to another page and from that page we move to another page so we excuse, have part excuse, excuse me Jose you're still on the first slide sorry you're still on the first slide you haven't moved at all really oh yeah, okay. something is happening okay. sorry well, it's all right. me... we'll get we'll get better at this tech it's Kay. new it's Kay. new to everybody let me try again okay yeah, this is new for everybody. Oh my gosh. So, can you see it now? Uh, yes, problems with linear text. Yeah, so, well, I was explaining those problems with big, uh, with linear text, then I moved to this, uh, can you see the new slide? Yeah, yeah, problems with linear text. It's a different slide than the first one. No, problems with websites now. Not yet, not yet. You might have uh, to. Wait, and then the problem is every time I move the slide, I you stay on the on the page that shows the PowerPoint. Don't, don't go to the video. Just pretend okay. the, pretend the video is not well, even there. Okay. Can you see now problems with websites now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then then I'll try to get. The problem is if wait up now. Now no. Problems with websites still. Yep. Well well we the problem is not too big. I was trying to, to make it bigger, but okay, it well. seems to be impossible. Well Okay, that's all right. The, the idea problem. is that with the websites we have uh, almost the same problems we have with traditional linear text because web pages are just blocks of linear text and with the complication that now we have uh, hyperlinks that take us to other pages or other web pages so when we move from one page to another we still have the problem of linear the problems of linear text but on the top of that now we are beginning to be lost this uh, idea of getting lost, of losing context, uh, was detected from the beginning. So people started thinking on ways of solving this problem. And one of the basic ideas is what is called breadcrumbs navigation. It's basically a line you usually have on the top of, of the web page that says, where have you been? before being in this page. So in this way, the, the, the author of the web pages tries to, to inform you about all places you have been visiting inside the website. This, this helps a little, but the, the problem is still, is still the same. The, you, you are lost and you need help to know where, where are you in, in, the, in the set of many we, uh, web pages in a website. I, I hope this concept is clear because uh, what my mapping does is to try to solve these problems of both linear text and websites. This is why it's so useful. Let's go to the next. Yeah, his, his, and now yeah, after his, his history of mind mapping. Okay. Well, the idea is, I, I would like to, to be sure that you have understood the, the nature of the problem. Okay. Do all of you understand that we have a problem with information and that the main problem is linear text that's, that has all this... all these problems? Okay. It's, it's, that's, Everybody understand this, or you yes. have doubts? Yes. 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 Understood. Understood. Yeah. All right. So, uh, as we are going to do several of these hangouts, I was, uh, I thought that the best thing was first to identify the problem, and then try to to explain to you that this problem has been identified by lots of people since a long time ago. So I have prepared a short 
short history of my mapping. The first person that uh, understood that do we, we all human beings have a problem was uh, a philosopher called Porphyry of Tyre, who was very active at in in the year 280 after Christ, the third century of our era, and then he was more or less the father of my mapping because let me see if you can I'll try to make this screen bigger so it, yeah maybe in your browser where you yeah, wait, wait you, uh, you double the size no sorry I'm that's okay. I, we we can see the diagram. We don't have to enlarge it. Do you see bigger now or not? Uh, no, it's the same size. Yes. But we can see, we can see that diagram. I think. Okay, let me see. Well, it's a bit. Well, the idea is that in those times, uh, most of the philosophical texts were written in ancient uh, Greek. That. Uh, be, Besides having all the problems we now have with uh, linear text, they had the extra problems that they never used blank spaces or blank lines. So, and there were no punctuation signs. So, reading a complicated ph philosophical textbook was rather complicated, and or very complicated. This man, Porphyry of Tyre, had was the first one to find the idea of, of doing something graphical that could clarify the situation because uh, in fact the first uh, he was trying to explain he wrote several books about uh, a, a work by Aristotle so it was uh, the categories and it had uh, very complicated ideas in them and this Porphyry of Tyre d discovered that unless he could imagine a, a way of offering a graphical display of this all this information his students and everybody was were having big, big very big problems to understand philosophical texts so he apparently he didn't draw this diagram on the right the first mind map, but he suggested that this had to be done in order to understand linear text. He, he saw it very clearly that it was impossible uh, without some visual display of information. So he suggested the idea and a, few, a couple of hundred years later another philosopher, Boetius, created the first mind map to help students in in trying to understand this work, uh, the categories of uh, Aristotle, Aristotle's categories. And this was more or less the, the first mind map. Let's move to the next. Okay. A few uh, hundred years later, in, in Spain, uh, religious scholars had the, another big problem with linear information. It was about how to describe the genealogies of uh, biblical people, for example, Abraham or any, any else. Uh, and then the problem here was that, well, you had to say, well, the father of Abraham was this one, or the, the son, the grandson, and so to to describe this as linear text, it was another a different kind of problem. This time it was not very complicated. The idea here is very simple: who is uh, the ancestor of whom? Or so is the information is not complex, but the, there are lots of information. If you describe many gener generations, you, you have problems. If you just write the name of uh, everybody after another name, it's, 
just a long list of names that doesn't make too much much sense. So they thought these religious scholars thought that displaying the displaying this information with the shape of a, a mind map. Well, they didn't call it mind map, but here is the the idea that this kind of information ben, uh, had. Uh, lots of benefits if it was displayed in a visual way. So it's basically the same idea, but this time the information is not so complex, but this is still a lot of information. In the 11th century, we start seeing something more similar to what we now call mind maps. In this case, it's uh, information also about uh, the same work by Aristotle's his categories and here we see something that is very similar to what we call what we call now mind maps and always the, the original problem is complex uh, ideas that uh, ca can only be understood if they, they have a, a visual support in this case, we find <coughs> something new: is that in every, in each of these boxes, that now in modern software we call these boxes are called topics. In these uh, boxes, we find not only some text but also small icons, because it helps to clarify the the, the text. So here we have a square, triangle, circle, pentagon, etc. So it's an advance <coughs> in the history of mind mapping. Another uh, another brilliant scholar. This is Ramon Llull. He's a philosopher from Mallorca, also in Spain, and he advance a little because <coughs> they started using maps and sub maps in this case is a main map and then 18 sub maps that go to the other to 18 different pages so it's the same idea but it gets they keep advancing and then here we have the first application in medi of mind mapping in medicine. The first is the wheel of union that was used to diagnose illnesses <coughs> from the color and aspect of urine. And then it's a pity you cannot see it in bigger because it's very interesting. The first version of these mind maps were created in 1420. And this is a very famous version because it was it's from Germany and it became <coughs> very popular. Apparently the book that contained this uh, mind map was, uh, they made something like 11 or 12 editions of the same book because apparently everybody in Germany was using the, this instrument. So it, it was quite interesting. And surprisingly, after this application, <coughs> 500 years ago, there has been almost nothing in medicine uh, with applications of, of mind mapping. It's quite, quite strange because it's very easy to, if just when, with one image, you can, uh, convey a lot of information to express uh, all the the context of this image in, in linear text would mean that you would need uh, probably 10 or 20 pages and it would be much more complicated then let's go after well after this and bef even before this we have other cases one minute This is another example. This was ma made by Leonardo da Vinci. 
to express uh, information about uh, a mathematical problem and uh, it's from from more or less from the same time as the the medical mind map and besides Leonardo da Vinci other famous people uh, use it for example Darwin and many other scientists uh, had had used mind mapping but it's strange that after this these years the the concept of mind mapping was used but very sparsely so very few people were using the, this these ideas and it's really surprising then after many years suddenly in the 1960s some people started having brilliant ideas for example the Simmons, Ross, Quillian and Ross created uh, something called the semantic networks and the semantic networks have, have all the more or less all the elements of modern mind mapping so they were uh, we could consider these people the, the the parents of of modern mind mapping despite not being very well known even now so because after them we have a new concept that is uh, the concept or well it's redundant but the concept of concept maps that concept maps are are very used in in medicine to ex, uh, to express knowledge in a very sophisticated way and they are very similar to mind maps but they have the the main difference is that mind maps start from a central idea and then you start adding branches and topics and concept maps can have several starting points so it's not only a central idea there can be two or three or as many as you want but they are two they can be used in in different or, or in similar situations but in any case uh, with modern software uh, software for mind mapping uh, can be used to create concept maps as well and you would never know if it has been created with software specific software for mind maps or for concept maps let's one step and then in the 70s appeared this this man called Tony Busan in in England he, uh, he can be considered the popularizer of mind maps what happened is that some people pretend he was or he himself he pretends he's the father of mind mapping but in fact he borrowed many ideas from uh, semantic networks but uh, they he said that he was the the owner of the ideas and we have to thank him that he created he popularized uh, the modern use of mind maps but uh, his books are a little confusing because they they give uh, some really strange ideas that have no scientific basis at all so it's, it's when you read one of probably 90 percent of the books in the market uh, for mind mapping uh, are have been written by Tony Busan but they are all very repetitive and he he always gives the same reasons and it's very strange because he tries to offer scientific reasons in favor of mind mapping but uh, in the 97 in 1974 uh, neurology had not advanced so much so, so he was giving ideas of the 70s and he is still offering the same reasons and ideas uh, 40 years after he started with this so it's, it's not uh, I don't like him very much and if you buy one of his books you'll find some really strange 
ideas like a concept for example is he calls it radiant thinking that uh, is, is very strange because radiant thinking really doesn't exist at all and it's very confusing in, in fact the other day uh, I, I discovered a, a scientific article a medical article saying that uh, um, they, they have uh, they, they were very very apparently very confused and instead of talking about radiant thinking they did they said that that mind mapping was about radioactive uh, thinking so it was because the concept of radiant thinking well I think it doesn't exist at all but well he was the popularized the, the problem is that with this popularization he created what he what he called the, the rules of mind mapping and he invented a list of rules that according to him had to follow proper mind maps and well some of the ideas are not bad but uh, other ideas were very strict and very limiting so for example according to him you could only use uh, keywords instead of a short text to describe concepts you could only use keywords so for example and then this created a lot of problems because for example uh, if you were just taking notes from a book uh, then uh, using keywords made sense at first uh, for yourself but uh, if you try to send one of your mind maps to another person the problem is that the other person many times had no idea what what was the the right meaning of the, those keywords and then this made things complicated and on the top of that uh, the look of these mind maps was not considered very professional in in, in many industries for example in, in banking or or insurance or I don't know uh, the mind maps created manually by the followers of Tony Busan look uh, a little too colorful so too exotic and people refuse to use them for uh, businesses and then a few years later in the end someone, this person called Jamie Nast in the United States had the idea, she saw that uh, mind mapping was not a very good concept to sell to companies so he, she changed the rules and created something called idea mapping that is basically the same as mind mapping but without the, the restrictions of uh, Tony Busan so instead of using just keywords she used uh, short uh, pieces of, of text and this made the mind map well the idea maps to look m much more professional and now you could send an idea map to, to a colleague or to a friend or to, a, or to your boss and they did they, 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 they could understand the meaning very well so it could the, the idea idea maps could be used as a means of communication and then uh, this is what uh, I had seen also in, in the beginning and I, I like very much the idea of idea mapping instead of mind mapping but for historical reasons I prefer to keep using the uh, mind mapping instead of idea mapping but we could also use idea mapping in fact in the end uh, I thought that the best way uh, would have been to, to call mind maps call them uh, information maps because this is what they are but uh, uh, but this was problematic because uh, a company in the United States had the idea of registering the name information mapping so 
the, the name belongs to them. So now nobody can use information mapping because it belongs to a company. So in the end, I returned to use mind mapping. But uh, then Tony Busan pretended he had registered the name mind mapping, but <laughs> so to make things more complicated. But in fact, uh, apparently this is not. Uh, it's not accepted by law, so you can still use my mapping without to, having to pay royalties to Tony Busan. But uh, by the way, this Tony Busan became extremely famous a few years ago because he managed to sell a mind mapping course to uh, Michael Jackson, the singer, just a few years before he died. And uh, apparently he charged him $250,000 for a two-day course uh, in mind mapping. Apparently, I don't know how he managed to do His This Tony Busan is a business uh, genius, so he can make money of anything you can imagine. So it's, it's very good in this respect. And finally, in the end, after all this, all this time, finally, let me see, wait a minute. Now, in the end, in, uh, after several years trying, in 2008, I managed to create the, the first complex mind map from information contained in a database. It was in in fact, this is a mind map, this is a management reporting mind map. It's information, well, I, I'm going to give you the details, even if you don't have no idea of insurance, but uh, transport companies have uh, to transport uh, products and deliver them, and they, they make a lot of use of insurance for, for this transport. And they have thousands and thousands of claims and they have a big problem trying to organize the information they need a very sophisticated management reporting system and then I had the idea that a mind map was the best way of creating a management report and we tried it and it was quite successful so this after this I, I started thinking on uh, in other businesses where this could be applied is when, when I discovered that in we could do very interesting things in medicine, for example. And just to finish uh, this uh, explanation, I'm going to show you a similar a management uh, report that, that I created for uh, departments like admi an admissions department in a hospital or uh, let me one second I, I'll show you one of these management reports for a uh, let me, one second okay so you're off the screen sharing now I'm off yes mm -hmm. well, one second Okay. I find it and we'll, we'll finish by today just showing this report okay. and then we can talk about what we have uh, seen today okay. and we, can, we could have s some questions. One minute, I'll find it. is missions department here you will see uh, this or okay one second and it will be on screen okay it sounds like it's warming up <laughs> oh yeah sorry now we are going to see this example, can you see it now? Yes, admissions report. Okay. Then this is uh, 
the, the software, this software is uh, the one that did, uh, how was his name, Michael, yesterday or? Uh, yes. I, uh, he was talking about the MindJet software and this is... Uh, oh, the John Hewitt was yesterday. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is the, I'm using this software, the MindJet or Mind Manager is called. And the idea is that, uh, well, I had the idea that that people managing an admissions department would like to have or would need to have something like this, but delivered to their to their smartphones or tablets, not once a day or once a week, but probably once every two hours to see what's happening. Here. I have invented, sorry, I was clicking on, for example, this is what we can, we can do, for example, this, uh, the statistics I was showing here, where, for example, by type of admissions, the manager of this department should know how, how many people today have arrived uh, to the admissions department coming from emergency or direct or for same day surgery or for because of a transfer or on observation etc so this type of report when it arrives to the tablet of these managers will give a very clear idea of what's going on and the manager can also compare this with what has been happening the same week. And well, if in fact you, you can have management reports similar to this without mind mapping, but with mind mapping it's much more dynamic and you can make many, you have many more advantages than having a linear report, so it's, uh, you could extend this with another level, so that there is no limit to, to what you can do. And this, this is, we can have charts or anything we, we want in the same screen. And one of the advantages that we will discover in the, in the next Hangout is that no matter what you do, you don't have to go to another screen. So you don't have the problems you have with web pages. In web pages, you click on a tab and then you move to another screen, to another web page, but then you cannot see what the, what you were seeing in the, in the previous screen. Here we are always, we always have a, glo a global view of everything, and at the same time we can see the de any detail. So this is this concept that looks very stupid, but it's, it's a very serious. Uh, concept. The idea that web pages don't help you so much as you think, because every time you go, you go from one uh, screen to another screen, your working memory cannot store so much information. So when you go to another screen, you forget what you were seeing in the previous screen. If you move to another one, you lose the previous one and and the two previous ones, etc. So the, this this concept is one of the main ideas why mind mapping is very helpful in managing complex information and in solving our problems with, with linear text. The idea that you never change, you are always in the same screen 
and you with zoom and clicking on some points you can go where you want but you never lose your context you know where you are you know you, the, this information corresponds to today and that this information corresponds to the w previous week well or, or the, the accumulated week etc and this is something that looks very silly the idea that you don't change the screen but this is one of the main causes why we cannot manage information uh, in, in, in linear in a linear fashion because it's it's impossible our brain cannot store uh, so much information in working memory and if you, we are in, all the time in this in having the same screen then we we don't need to use our memory because everything is here we can see uh, if we need a little more information we just move to another point of the screen and we have the information we need so it's I think uh, well we can talk about this now my idea was to stop here okay. and then maybe talk a little bit about uh, what do you think of the history of my mapping or if you see it reasonable that my mapping is so helpful in trying to solve our information problems. Very good, Jose. Thank you very much for the introduction and the history of mind mapping. I was kind of surprised when I looked at your book and saw what way back to the ancient Greeks. Okay, we'll have a few minutes and we'll ask a couple of questions. We'll start with you, Simon. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I enjoyed your presentation. I'm sorry I have to um, to leave soon, but I'd like to ask a question. Um, I was interested in the in the history and uh, as I was watching your presentation coming towards the end and I saw your hospital presentation it reminded me of biochemistry and you know in biochemistry everyone was dreading this course but then when I came to the course I found it was so easy because uh, I guess it's kind of like mind maps you know there it is laid out right in front of you you don't have to go and see uh, many pages yeah. I found when I went into the textbook I, I couldn't read it as for, for more than you know uh, you know, half an hour at a time before my mind just got cloudy. Then I went to the the mind maps or of the biochemistry figures, and it was so easy to remember. So when I took the test, I could easily picture those maps, yeah. and that's all I did. So I just made my own maps. I copied them onto map, and they were all over my wall, and that was the way I did it. So, well, but I would like to know how to read a book and make a map. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, in fact many people. What they do is they read books and create a mind map of that book and in, in many cases you can all the information of a book can be contained on a single page yeah. and but if this is if you do it uh, with pen and paper but if you use software like uh, this mind yet or my manager then uh, no matter how big is the book you can everything can be contained in a single mind map and then to read everything you only need to, to watch uh, to see, look at one one screen so mm. you are yeah. never lost and then it's uh, but many the idea of in fact a company was a few years ago a company was created that uh, well in the end I don't know if they succeeded or not financially but the idea was that for every book in the market that they wanted to have a mind mapping version of that book so uh, people could uh, instead of uh, going and reading all the book you could just download a mind map and then understand everything contained in that book and that's uh, a very very interesting idea well in fact I uh, I had the idea a couple of years ago I had the idea that uh, publishing companies besides publishing the book or an article should pu publish also a mind mapping version of that book and that article and that people could buy both so you could just read the, the mind map and decide if you wanted to to read the, all the detail of the book or not and in any case and I think especially for articles you all scientific articles should 
come with a mind mapping version. And well, I think, in fact, if I don't know if you got uh, the link to my presentations in on SlideShare, one of my presentations it was called uh, "Mind Mapping in uh, E-Publishing," and and then I uh, there I explained my idea of this idea of that every all publishers should give uh, at least as an option uh, a mind mapping version of every article or, or book because this, great. I would this, love it well, this, well, you, well you know Jose it seems similar to the linking philosophy of the internet essentially sorry can you it, se say? It, it seems pretty similar to the linking philosophy of the web well what happens is that uh, mm, I don't know. Well, everything is uh, no, but I think that the idea of mm, mind mapping is that uh, it filters all information that is not useful. So in the mind map, you only write everything, that, everything that is unavoidable, that, that you have to know it. So uh, instead of in many books. You you have uh, lots of information that could be deleted and mm -hmm. nobody would happen. Nothing would happen if mm -hmm. that information was not here. And on on mind maps, you only have the, the information that is required. That is basic to to understand something. And but the, you can do because on, in mind maps, on the top of that, you can include, for example, small videos. Okay. And in Instead of just having uh, a book in PDF form, you could have the same book with lots of videos in in interesting points and hyperlinks to websites. So you could have. Uh, I think the mind map is much better than. Or mm. I used to call it mind maps, the PDFs of the 21st century because oh. it's. It's like a PDF with much many more dimensions. Okay. Okay, Ma Manuel, do you have uh, a questions or comments for uh, Jose? Yes, I got a question. I have enjoyed the presentation, so thank you, Jose Maria. I must uh, admit, I I haven't heard about my mapping before, so I I was a little bit uh, surprised about the concept first, and then about the applications. So it's clear that uh, it may have applications in several fields, such as admissions at a hospital and also in publishing. But yeah. I'd, I'd like to uh, ask you, Jose Maria, uh, would it also be an application, a clinical practice? Because uh, we doctors in, in clinical practice need, uh, need to, to make uh, clinical history, the medical history, uh, clinical yeah. reports, and yes. um, and, and uh, I think uh, we doctors have uh, drawbacks. We have problems sometimes explaining histories and the record of a patient. So uh, perhaps yes, we I, I, need to, to know more about my application for clinical practice itself. Yes, there are lots of them, and for example. Talking about history, medical histories, I, I'm going to show you now. I propose a mind mapping version of the personal health his personal health record. One second. Mm -hmm. This, for example, now that you are here, one second. This is. Can you see it now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This. Am I mapping? Okay. okay. Let me let me highlight. Okay. Okay. Yes, we can see it. And now I cannot see it. Uh, oh. Uh, well, it went. It just slipped. Sometimes Sorry. it slips off. Now can you see? It? Yeah. Uh, this is, yes. Yes, we can see it. The idea of this. Is that well? You, you can 
visualize uh, or work with electronic health records using computers or, or the internet but you you need uh, to be in a hospital or at uh, a doctor's office to to be able and in some places now they are beginning to offer patients access to EHRs for, uh, using the internet but but the problem is that usually these systems are very complicated however this and and you need to be connected to the internet all the time but if you create this personal health record then you can the patient can download it uh, to his tablet or smartphones and take it with him for example when they go on holidays on a cruise you can take all your personal history and show it to any doctor anywhere even without connection to the internet and it's very easy you you don't need uh, too much time to learn how to use this you just have to need you, you just need to to know that if you click on a, on this symbol with a plus sign then it opens and then you see but in a couple of minutes anyone can learn to use it and then you offer the patient you empower the patient because for example look at this this is just an example this I'm going to show you an example of for example this is an x-ray and then you can have all the information available for patients and physicians and the, the type of application you can create here it's, uh, it's incredible the, you can have videos or links to web pages uh, and, and patients can use it and you can take it anywhere you want and when generating this uh, mind map you can do it in English or Spanish or French or whatever language and it's just all this my map I didn't say it but it's just a small uh, file once one single file so you take this single file in your tablet or in your smartphone or download it from the internet but it's something very simple it's not a database that has to be stored in complicated uh, file systems. It's just one file and the software is uh, a free viewer and the, the, the type of applications you, you can you can have is, is really amazing. Okay. And okay. okay. Um, one question before we wrap up, uh, Jose, yeah. and then now that Manuel's here, uh, I want to ask you kind of both the question. Now, I saw one of your early slides you showed that you had a reference to being used for stroke patients. Uh, is that because of being able to think with images is easier? And Michael, are you familiar with any studies that post-stroke patients can think better with using an image-based type of learning? Well, and from my side, what I can tell you is that there have been uh, uh, many uh, attempts to, to use mind mapping to interact with patients. For okay. example, the, the company Lilly, pharmaceutical company, uses a system that they call it dialogue uh, diagrams that they are basi they basically they, they use mind maps to explain everything about their illnesses to uh, to patients for example they use it for diabetes patients and it's a mind map but this guy is as a it's, it looks like a square and with people walking and they use this the system to communicate with patients uh, and apparently results are very good patients like 
this way of communicating with doctors. And well, I think it should be, now that this technology is available, we can create uh, many different mammas. For example, another uh, thing that I'm going to talk about in, in this Paris conference is, is the fact that, that after a pa patient receives a diagnosis, they usually don't don't have uh, don't receive much information. Just maybe a single page with uh, the prescription and the doses they have to to take. Except, but not, they don't receive information about their. Just to finish, if you give me one minute. I'm going okay. to show you a proposal. Okay. It's just one second. The idea is that. When a patient is diagnosed, he should receive much more information than he receives now. Yeah, especially today. Because yeah. as they, they don't receive information, they start going to Google to look for information about their the illness. And this is dangerous because they can find good information or bad information. We never know. I, I think it would be better if the doctor that prescribes offers one second offers all the information in using mind mapping one second Oops. because I had prepared an example yeah, we're still on the same screen. Okay, we're off the screen. Right. No, this. Oh, sorry. One you're, second. You're still well, on maybe, screen. maybe we'll have to leave it for next. Yeah, well, let, let's next let's, uh, next time. Yeah, for next hangout. Yeah. But, uh, the yeah. idea is that, that uh, this mind mapping concept is so powerful uh, that you can use it for almost anything you can imagine. Preoperative instructions discharge instructions and what I call this post-diagnosis instructions. Very good. Very good. I guess we'll end it there, uh, uh, Jose. Thank you very much for okay. time. And we'll, we'll continue this uh, and we'll talk about it later when we're going to do this. Emmanuel, thank you uh, for coming out from uh, Madrid. Okay. My, then. My pleasure. I'll join the next one. Okay, hang on, and we'll talk, we'll chat a bit after, but we'll sign off right now. Thank you. This is part one, bye, bye. part one of introduction to the applications of mind mapping for medicine with Jose Guerrero. We'll continue on probably next weekend. Thank you.